welcome to this video. We are going to take a look at a problem from one of your packets. Um, you have a key to this problem. It deals with longitudinal waves, and there's a special kind of graph which this problem is centered on. And it's a different graph from what we've seen in the past. The y-axis has displacement, the x-axis has position, but that is a misleading term. It is not just position, it's actually equilibrium position. So I'm going to help you interpret this graph uh, using a picture of a medium. Some, some we'll have a medium we'll look at, and <coughs> we'll answer the questions. Um, I apologize in advance. I just had a lot of pizza, so if I have pizza breath, uh, you know, just bear with me. Wait, what? Okay, here's our question: A longitudinal wave passes through a medium. Right there, uh, and then below is the displacement position graph of the wave and the medium after some time has passed. The source oscillates with a frequency of 0.833 hertz. So right at the very beginning, a longitudinal wave passes through a medium. We want to make sure we understand visually what this is. So take a look. What we have here are particles, maybe gas particles. okay, And they have some pressure. Uh, they have some density, and hence some, hence some pressure. But right now, they're all evenly spaced, so the pressure is constant throughout, the density is constant throughout. Uh, on average, they are evenly spaced apart, like this. But what we can do is we can make a dotted line for this, this undisturbed position that they have before there's a wave. So what I've shown is a medium with no wave. Okay. Then what we do is we send a sound. We have some source over here. Maybe it's a you know a speaker with its uh, box there, and it sends this pressure. It bounces that box. Uh, the speaker box vibrates back and forth. It oscillates, and when it does, it bumps into these particles. These sound particles. Uh, sorry, these gas particles causing this wave to be sent through. So after a little time passes, you know, these particles, they're oscillating. It's a longitudinal wave. So each one starts oscillating in the same direction that the wave moves in. So if the wave is moving to the right, wave is going, the longitudinal wave goes to the right, each particle oscillates left and right, back and forth, like this. And I'm not going to draw all these arrows, or I'll pause the video. So there it is. They're all oscillating. Uh, but they're not all oscillating in sync. Some are at a different stage or phase of the oscillation as compared to others. So when this one, when this one has been moved over, maybe, I don't know, maybe to, uh, maybe it's been moved over to right here. So it's been displaced to the right, some amount x, that's its displacement from its center position. This one, is still at the center position, maybe. And the third one here, let's say, has been pushed over like this. So it has some negative displacement to the left. It's displaced to the left. And this one, let's say, is still right here in its normal position. And then this next one, and then this next particle, has been pushed, let's say, over like this. If we look at it after a little time, it has some rightward positive displacement. And then this one right here is still at the center. And I'll pause this and fill in the rest. And so what I've drawn here is not a coincidence. It follows a pattern. And this is exactly the pattern that you see when the source is oscillating back and forth with simple harmonic motion. This is the kind of pattern produced in the medium. And so what I just finished drawing was uh, the medium with a wave. That's what's down here, is the same medium. And what, I, what I'm showing is a snapshot in time. So I'm taking a photo, this is one moment in time, showing the relative positions of all, the relative displacements of all the particles. Okay. Now come back to this graph. And whoops, oh, whoops, it should be meters here, not centimeters. Um, the first thing you do is you circle the units, right? Make sure you have noticed what the units, what the axes are. Notice what 
effect on the axis. Circle those values. Um, and <coughs> what do they mean by position on the x? They say position, but what they really mean is equilibrium position. That's what's on the x-axis. So there's some particle whose equilibrium position is zero. Right? That would be where is it? This one is the particle whose equilibrium position is zero meters. Okay? And there's some other particle whose equilibrium position right here, let's say, whose equilibrium position is smack dab between point two and point three. That's equilibrium the equilibrium position of this particle is point three meters. And so uh, I could write in if I wanted. So the x-axis values are simply these values here. What's the equilibrium position? If you start at the left and then measure how, uh, how far apart they are when at their equilibrium position, you record those values on the graph on the x-axis. Those are our x data points, our x values, rather. So what's on the y-axis? The y-axis is the amount of displacement from this equilibrium position. So on the y, it shows how far has that particle at this equilibrium position, how far has it been pushed? Um, the particle at 0 meters is not moved left or right. The particle at 0.3 meters has been moved to the right, see, has been moved to the right by 0.1. The particle at 0.6 is not moved at all. The particle here at 0.9 has been pushed over to the left. Hmm. Did I get that right in my picture? Uh-oh, no, I didn't. Uh, so I'm not, I have not correctly displayed what the wave looks like for this graph, right? What's it look like? What would the graph look like for my wave? Let's imagine that each of these displacements is uh, point, point 0.1. So this value is point 0.1, this is negative point 0.1, this is point 0.1, negative point 0.1, point 0.1 positive. I'm just making up how far apart these are, how far they've been pushed from their center position. If we put each of these green x's as 0.1, here's what the displacement graph would look like for my moment in time that I've selected. You would have displacement and then position. And my first particle whose position, whose center position is 0, would be 0.1 to the right. And then the next one is right here in the middle. So this would be 0.3 on the x-axis. And it is right smack dab in the equilibrium position. The next one, which is at a center position of 0.6, is, has been pushed to the left. So that's negative. How far to the left? By negative 0.1. So my next data point would be here. Then for this particle, it's back at the center, so 0.9 is the x value. And my graph would look like this. Like that. So I would have a cosine curve uh, instead of this, which is a sine curve. So this is simply showing a different moment in time. But what I want to show you is I want to come down. So you can look at how to solve these from the key that I've given you. Right? But what I want to show you, this part here, this diagram shows the equilibrium position of seven particles in the medium. Here's point 0.1, this is point 0.3 if you count your intervals, point 0.6, point 0.9, 1.2, the 1.5, 1.8, and 2, 2 meters. So each of these particles is shown when there's no wave. We have to put x's indicating where they are at the moment represented by this graph. So the very first thing you see is, okay, they've given us particles spaced 0.3 apart. 
So that means one of the particles is right is here, one of the particles is represented by this point, one of the particles is represented here, one is represented by this data point, right? Point nine is what that was. Another one of the values they showed was one point two on that on that line. Uh, and so this is another particle that's been represented, and the final particle was 1.5. Smack dab between 1.4 and 1.6. Okay. So the question is, where are the particles based on the, ec the displacement values shown in the graph? The first particle has no displacement. Its displacement is zero. So we come down, and we for the first particle, where is it? It still is at the equilibrium position. For the second particle, whose center position is 0.3, we track up the graph, and we find it has been moved 0.1 to the right. So we come down, and instead of being here at the center, it's been moved over 0.1 to the right. The next one, at 0.6, that particle is at the center position. It has no displacement. The y value is 0. So it has no displacement. That means it still is located at its center position. The next one, if you look, the particle whose center position is 0.9. So 0.9, find it on the graph. Here it is. You trace down, and it's right like that. Its displacement is negative 1. So that means to the left by 0.1, it's negative 0.1. So it's to the left by 0.1. So you come and you say, okay, it's not right here. It's been pushed to the left. And you put next. And you continue in this fashion and you find that your graph will look like this. 1.8. Let's check and see I've done this correctly. I feel like I've done this incorrectly. I know I have. Hang on. This is why you don't guess. Uh, instead, it should be this. And there it is. That's, a, that's what it should look like. And those x's represent the particles, the spheres, simply in the moment shown on our graph. Okay. So if we want, we could actually even say, look, right here is the center of a compression, because this one has been pushed over, and this one has been pushed over. Whoops. This has been pushed over, and this one has been pushed over. I don't just have pizza breath, I also have pizza brain, apparently. This is a rare faction, right? Because the particles by it, there's an x here, and an x here. So the its neighbors are really spread out. Right here, this would actually be another compression. The next particle, if you continued looking at the graph, would be right here. Okay. And that's how you solve these problems with this line graph the number line. That's it.